Hey guys, welcome to my video. Um, I know it's been a while, but I've been pretty busy, and I thought I'd find the time to make a new video for you guys. So it's almost time for the holidays, and I got myself a little early Christmas present. Here it is the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus from iConnectivity. Amazing. What's so amazing about this device is it has a new technology called Audio Pass Through. Now this enables me to use like my iPad. I can use the Simps, the apps with MIDI ins and outs with my digital audio workstation. So you can imagine using your iPad, any synth inside, well not any, but mostly all the synths inside as if for plugins. I think that's just awesome. Um, how that works is basically it gets an audio source of MIDI ins and outs and it's sent into the iConnect MIDI then it's converted into MIDI data and then sent straight to your computer and their computer takes those outputs and then routes it back into iConnect MIDI and the iConnect MIDI sends that signal back to your iPad and it's kind of like a full circle going on over there if you're confused you know what I mean when I show you okay so I'm gonna show you how to set it up it's pretty easy Firstly, um, this device comes with a 30-pin adapter for your iPad. Well, if you have a, an 8-pin adapter, if you're using an iPad Mini or, you know, the iPad Air, uh, you have to get, you know, an adapter for 30-pin to 8-pin. But it comes with the 30-pin. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like. It's this little 30-pin adapter right here. Okay, so what you do with this is... Do you plug it in? Yes, but you don't do it now. Okay. First, what you do is you open up the apps you want to use with MIDI ins and outs. And I already have a preset, so it's easier to show you. Okay, I have Arctic Pro Synth. I'm opening this up. Okay, and you go to the settings, MIDI. Make sure it's on channel one. And don't, you know, don't press anything else. Just leave it all blank for now don't have any uh, devices running inside of your each of your synths I'm gonna be using three synths to show you in this video which is Arctic Pro Synth, uh, N-Log Synth, and Arctic Keys N-Log Synth will be on channel 2 go to MIDI, make sure it's on channel 2 and also make sure all your synths are, have their background mode on this is really important and then Arctic Keys sorry that's Arctic Pro Keys, Arctic Keys Go to MIDI, make sure it's on channel 3, yep, nothing else is toggled, okay, background audio on, background audio on, okay, perfect. Okay, so the next step is you plug port 2, the USB input, into your computer. So one side goes into port 2, and the other side goes into your computer. You can see at the top there's a computer image over here and then it starts to light up which means it's alive yeah then what you do is you go to audio media setup I already have it open but you can go here by going to audio media setup uh, audio media setup and then at the top I don't know if you can see go to window show audio window Oh, now it's gone because I just closed it. Okay, there you go. This is where all your aggregate devices are, where you create and delete them. You go ahead and create one with this plus sign down here. Create aggregate device. Then you're going to select iConnect MIDI 2. Built-in uh, input, built-in output. Okay. And it, you can also name your aggregate device if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and name it um, Xmas Gift. There you go. Okay, once that's done, uh, you close that window. And then you open up uh, Ableton Live. Well, that's what I'm using for my demonstration. Okay, wait. I have Pro Tools open. Let me close that. Okay, now I have Ableton Live opened. Uh, you go to the preferences and then audio 
And then make sure you have, well, as you can see, I have Xmas gift. I'm going to zoom in. Xmas gift. Select Xmas gift as the audio input device and for the output device as well. You don't have to name it Xmas gift. I mean, you can name it I Connect MIDI 2 Plus or whatever you like. Um, go to the output config and select output 3 and 4 stereo. The next thing we do is we go to the input configuration, select input 1 and input 2, then press OK, then close the preferences. As you can see, I have one audio track and three MIDI tracks enabled in my DAW. The audio track is for you to record audio, obviously, but most importantly is for you to monitor um, whatever you're playing in real time. The MIDI tracks represent my three apps or synths on my iOS device. And the first one would be Arctic Pro Stance, the second one will be Unlock Synth Pro, and the third one would be Arctic Keys, and also as well as recording the MIDI data sent from the iConnect MIDI 2 device. Okay, I'll show you what's going on over here. I have port 1 connected to the 30 pin connector, and then I have the 30 pin connector, uh, which I'll plug into the iPad 2. Once I plug it in, you won't be able to hear any sounds when I play on the iPad. That's completely normal. That just means your iPad is connected to the aggregate device. Okay, so that's working fine. And underneath it, you can see I have a Q25 MIDI keyboard controller. Now, you don't have to use uh, this brand of keys, any brand of keys. M Audio, you can use Akai, you can use Yamaha, whatever keyboard is compatible with your DAW, most importantly. And I'm using just a standard USB uh, cable connected uh, from my Q25 keyboard to my computer. And it's um, working, it's lighting up, so it's working. Then I'm going to go back into my DAW. and configure the inputs and the outputs. So if you can see for the audio track, I have external in selected, one and two. For the output, I have external out selected, three and four. For the MIDI tracks, um, for the inputs, you select the MIDI keyboard controller that you're using. In this case, I'm using the Q25. Um, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard controller, you want to use your iPad, that's perfectly fine as well. Just select the third uh, ICM to USB port. Then select channel 1. For the output, select uh, the third port, ICM to USB 2.3. Now this port is the only port that will work uh, right now because um, it's set to default. If you want to configure it to the other ports, you have to download the software and program it yourself. Then I'm going to select channel 1 because my Arctic Pro Synth is programmed to media input channel 1. Do the same for the inputs on the second MIDI track and the third MIDI track, and as well as the outputs. The only difference is um, the first MIDI track, you have to set it configured, um, set the output configured to channel 1, and the second one, uh, configure the output to channel 2, and the third one, configure the output to channel 3. Because I programmed my Arctic Pro Synth to be on MIDI input channel 1, and Lock Synth Pro to be channel 2, and uh, Arctic Keys to be channel MIDI input channel 3. I did that in the beginning of the video. Okay, now when I zoom out, I'm gonna arm, excuse me, I'm gonna arm audio, the audio track, and the first MIDI track. So you should hear, uh, Arctic Pro Synth playing. As I said, it works in a cycle, so if you look at your iPad, it's playing. The pitch and modulation wheels respond as well. Okay. Now, if you want to play your Nlock Synth Pro, like in this case, you want to switch the sound. You unarm the first MIDI track, and then you arm the second MIDI track. Now, Nlock Synth Pro is playing. Then, if you want to select the third MIDI uh, track for a different sound, you unarm the second one and arm the third one. 
that's Arctic Keys playing. I'm going to use the first MIDI track, which is, um, you know, the Arctic Pro Keys, or Arctic Pro Synth, excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and record something in the DAW, just to see what else you can do. I'm going to global arm the session, hit record, and play. Okay, as you can see, I recorded audio as well as MIDI. Uh, we don't need the audio right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And when you double click on the MIDI track, you can see the piano roll. It also recorded in the velocities as well. If you have the headphone button selected here, it lights up in blue, allowing you to hear the notes when you drag the notes up and down. So you can edit, uh, it's really interesting, you can edit it as if it was a real VST instrument plugin. the velocity as well and also it records uh, the envelopes which are you know the modulation and the pitch bend which is really cool if I select the pitch uh, if I select the pitch bend you can see the pitch bends at this section of the MIDI data or of the MIDI data okay so if you want to see the modulation data uh, go to envelopes, select pitch bend. Instead of pitch bend, select modulation, and you can see the modulation data displayed in the window here. I'm going to play it back so you can hear. Okay, that's really cool, interesting. Um, there's a lot you can do as if it was an instrument. You could draw notes, uh, you can quantize, transpose add in MIDI uh, effects, I mean to your MIDI track. Now one thing that is unfortunate is if you unplug your iPad, the sounds are gone, they disappear. I mean, you can't store it as a patch inside your DAW. So how do you save, uh, how do you save your patches and you reuse them if you want? You do that by saving it in your iPad. Uh, I can demonstrate what happens when you unplug it. When you plug it, you want to take your iPad out for a walk, the sounds are gone. But if you want to recall the sounds, I mean, you simply just plug it back into your iPad. And it comes back in about three seconds. Three, two, one. So that's the best you can do uh, in terms of recalling your patches. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave me a comment, send me a message, and don't forget to subscribe. I hope you have a Merry Christmas.